So, hi everybody. I'm just getting us live on uh, Facebook as well, and then we'll get started. Should have been a minute, just getting set up. It's being a bit slow today, so sorry about this. <laughs> Thanks for joining us anyway. Today's webinar is how salons can boost their retail sales when they reopen, which I think is a yeah, topic on everyone's mind at the moment, certainly reopening. I think we've just stalled a bit on the, uh, the Facebook live stream, so give me a second. I'm just going to try again. I'm just going to get us live a alternative way, which is a bit quicker. I think we're going live now. Excellent, so I'm pretty sure we're live now on Facebook and on Zoom. So hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. As I say, how salons can boost their retail sales when they reopen. So I'm Eve Oxbury, I'm Head of Editorial at Professional Beauty. And um, before we start the webinar, I just want to say a huge thank you because today the support that we've had so far for our Salons Are Safe campaign has been absolutely incredible. Um, if you've not got involved yet, I really do urge you to. Um, all the details are on our website and over on our social channels, but we're just asking everybody to post today, Friday 3rd of July, just to make as much noise as possible to show that beauty salons and spas are safe to reopen, um, that they're hugely important to the UK economy and that basically we need a new reopening date as soon as possible. So yeah, please get involved. So today's webinar. I am just going to switch so you can see. <laughs> today's webinar is with the wonderful Fiona Brackenbury. Hi Fiona. Hi, how is everyone? How are you Eve? I'm really good, yeah. I think, well, everyone's uh, having a bit of a tough time at the moment, definitely, with uh, the, the wait for a reopening date, a confirmed date. So it's been a crazy hectic week and I think we've had so many conversations about how tough it's been. But yeah, I think everyone's doing amazing, that you're like, doing so well, staying strong during all of this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Fiona is an absolute expert in skincare and spa. She's got more than 30 years experience. Um, a lot of people know her as the skin ex expert behind Declior for many years, um, where she designed treatments and developed products. And now she's got her own consultancy. So yeah, Fiona is an absolute expert and it's great to have her with us. Um, so before Fiona starts her webinar, um, I'm just going to run through, if you have any questions, we'll have a little bit of time at the end for a Q&A. So um, if you're watching in Zoom, type your questions in the little Q&A box that you should see at the bottom of your screen. And if you're watching on Facebook, just put them in the comments and we will get to them just really, really soon. So excellent. I am, yeah, I'm going to hand over to Fiona now to start sharing your screen if you'd like to. Wonderful. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. So fingers crossed everything goes to plan. Um, just bear with me one second. You should hopefully be able to see my screen. And uh hopefully everyone everyone can see everything all good and hear me well so thank you eve and um and thank you pro beauty as well for for what you're you're doing at the moment is absolutely incredible and i know from somebody that's been um you know in the industry for many years it, it means a lot to every single one of us and also thank you for inviting me to talk to you today it's an absolute pleasure and to be here and as you know and as you said I've been in the industry for over 30 years and I'm extremely passionate about our industry 
and I've been very fortunate to have this as a profession for over 30 years. And I've had many roles as, um, you know, being a therapist and managing spas in the UK and overseas. And my last role before I became independent consultant was um, global education director for a major skincare brand, as you've said, Eve. Um, and I'm, I'm hugely passionate about skin, um, in particular, the science behind the ingredients and the science behind skin and how you can just get incredible results with knowing and having all of that knowledge. But I'm particularly passionate about how we engage with our customers, your guests, your consumers. Uh, that um, is something that I've spent many years really studying and understanding. And um, I, it's funny, I'm often connected to retail sales um, and probably through at least probably the last 10, 20 years of my, of my career has been very closely connected to retail sales. But I don't see myself as a pure sales person. I'm passionate about solving skincare problems. And I think that a byproduct of that is actually uh, is sales. So um, it's interesting that I'm often referred to and, and connected very closely to sales. Um, so much has changed in such a short space of time and the customer journey and the experience um, has had to and is going to change dramatically for each and every single one of us. Um, all the touch points that we would have been able to allow our clients to discover, you know, those new products, they're no longer going to be available. And I'll explain why, because previously on upon arrival into any of your spas and any of your salons, um, you, you know, your client, your, your guest, your consumer would have gone to reception. She would have checked in um, for her appointment. And maybe your clients would have waited in a retail area or they would have waited in a reception area. And during that time, they would have been able to discover um, all the new product launches that you've got, um, maybe all the new offers that you've got running. Um, she'd also been able to engage and play with the products. And, you know, maybe even your receptionist, maybe she was particularly good at really engaging with, with, with your customers. And she would be saying things like, you know, have you seen this or this is new or feel this or maybe share with what she's using. Um, and if I take the dentists as an example of how they've implemented the changes um, post COVID, um, we'll really see kind of what are, you know, what we're going to need to do. Um, you know, now you wait in your car until you receive a message to, to come in. Uh, you're instructed to not bring any bags with you or any coats with you, keep your mobile phone in your pocket. Um, and then when you enter the building, you know, you're given a temperature test. Um, your temperature is taken, you are asked to sanitize your hands, and you're asked to read a COVID-19 questionnaire. Um, and then you go straight through to the room. You don't wait anywhere. Uh, all the doors are propped open, so you're not touching anything. And this new norm doesn't allow us to have all of those retail opportunities that we once relied on, or even though we may not have thought of them as retail opportunities, and maybe we didn't even think on them on relying, they were part of the customer experience. And also they were buying signals. You know, if you were, if you were really hot on it, you'd have seen um, she would have been picking up something or maybe the new launch, or maybe there was a gift with purchase. She would have been, you know, picking up on that and you would have registered that in your mind. They were all buying signals um, of her possibly thinking of, of buying products. Um, so obviously this new journey and this new customer experience is gonna change, um, but there are really exciting things that come with this change. Um, so the first thing obviously we do need to do is we do need to engage with our customers. Um, and we'll be calling ahead to explain the new procedure, of course. Um, and this is really an important step to put your client's minds at ease. And, you know, you'll take her through how the visit will differ and the precautions that you have taken to protect her during this time. Um, and this is really important. So this really builds uh, customer confidence. But there are opportunities that come with you just making that phone call and just sharing with her the new customer journey. First of all, you're going to be engaging and reconnecting. Um, and this has possibly been the first time you've connected um, for maybe three months, even more. 
Um, and so therefore we do want to, uh, you know, engage and reconnect with her, but also we need to rebuild that relationship and we need to take the time to listen to how she's coped. Um, and a big part of what we do is always centered around well-being and centered around caring for our clients. Um, and these relationships really need to be valued and they really need to be nurtured. And there's opportunities where we will get to listen and, and really probe and understand how she's been feeling, how has she coped through lockdown, but also there's opportunities to listen to how her skin is, how her nails are, how her eyebrows are, all of those things that she will openly tell you very naturally and, and probably did tell you previously on all those phone calls when you were confirming appointments or just answering the phone but you actually never needed to take real key notice of those, those key messages um, because you knew that she was coming in and you knew that there was never any option for her not to come in. Do you know, she was, she's a regular, she's coming in, she's booked. Um, these are all buying signals and now they're even more important than they ever were before. And um, this makes me smile because um, I'm sure this will be no surprises to you all that the customers that you thought you knew so well um, may have changed their routines um, during lockdown. Um, some beyond all recognition, I'm sure. Um, I've given them names, but I, 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 I kind of think that um, Cautious Carol springs to mind. Um, she's going to be a client that's done nothing um, and she's let everything grow. Uh, she relies on your recognition expertise um, she hasn't been out she's run out of product uh, and she's desperate to see you um, and get her skin back into a routine and get back on track but then on the other side you're gonna have daredevil dawn and I'm sure you can already start to think of those customers that have gone and bought online eyebrow tinting let's hope and pray they didn't go as far as tinting their eyelashes at home. Um, but they will have probably done their own manicures and pedicures. Um, maybe they even embarked at, um, at home facials, maybe Mask Friday, um, maybe even gone as far as self-prescribing herself vitamin A and a, a strength that maybe you wouldn't necessarily put her on. And maybe she's done lots of peels that she's lost count of. Um, I'm sure there are clients that you recognize there, but I'm sure there are also the middle of the road mollies, as I call them, um, that also do need your help and they need your advice. So you've reconnected with your client and she's booked in for a treatment and regardless of the treatment that they have booked in and regardless of what your client has and is going to um, book in for, um, it's really important that we do a thorough consultation. Um, and that needs to be completed and that's always been really important even before but it now becomes even more important um, consultations have always been the key framework of, of understanding our clients needs for me more importantly they were always about meeting the client's expectations um, and many of you have already planned um, to send an electronic consultation and I think that is brilliant and I'm, I'm really delighted that you know we're really thinking of actually we need to limit what they're doing when they come in um, so an online consultation is absolutely fantastic however if this is the only consultation you do which is great for updating medical information and checking contraindications however that if you only do that there is an opportunity for you to do more than that. And you're missing a huge opportunity. Um, and the reason I say this is because electronic consultations are missing lack of detail. They're missing detail. They are also missing the opportunity for you to delve and probe deeper into what she's saying. And let's be honest, quite often, and we've all been there, we've all filled in, in forms, we've just put one word answers. Um, and that's going to be really difficult for you to really establish a really concrete picture. So this is where I really think virtual consultations are going to be a huge part of our new transformation and our new way forward. Um, it's important to say, though, and I'm sure lots of you are probably thinking, you know, surely, Fiona, you're not suggesting a virtual consultation is going to replace a skin analysis. Absolutely no. You will still do the skin analysis at the beginning of, of all of your treatments. 
but don't forget the luxury of the chatting in reception, the luxury, you know, before the treatment, after the treatment, they are no longer options because we'll need to be really strict with our appointment times. Um, we're going to need to manage that flow of people through the spa and through the salon. And during lockdown, what's really interesting, and I'm sure you can relate to this yourself within your own family um, bubble, is that our behaviours and our habits have changed. Um, you know, normally we would be busy all day at work and we'd only really be up for texting and we'd only be up for maybe WhatsApping. Um, but now we are speaking um, and we're comfortable chatting on Skype or Zoom or FaceTime. And now that's become much more acceptable, which is brilliant because you can start to see people's faces and you can engage with them so much more. And that's really where I'm coming from when I'm saying let's do a virtual consultation. But there is more and there are more opportunities and more pluses to doing a virtual consultation as well. Now, I smile when I say this because tech is no longer the baddie and, and we have been critical of e-commerce for obvious reasons. Um, and now technology is really going to help us connect with our consumers and really drive our business forward. Um, before all our treatments, I recommend and I really urge you to take you know, a moment to think about this and think about, and when I've explained all the opportunities and all the things that can come of this, I think you'll really understand that a pre-arranged virtual consultation is essential as part of the new journey. Um, it's better if you can give your clients options. So perhaps if your method, your preferred method is Zoom, um, don't forget there is Skype, don't forget there is FaceTime. And um, I would recommend that uh, this is arranged after the uh, initial treatment booking so your client called or you called and you have locked down an appointment time um, it's really important that you explain the new journey guideline is that she will have a virtual consultation um, and it's important that you explain that that's part of it explain this is part of the new procedure um, and it's really to limit unnecessary contact in the spa so that that journey going through the spa is really seamless um, and we're not having any overlapping or any unnecessary um, and the rule really should be and i really urge you to take on board this is that no virtual consultation means no treatment and I'll explain why in more detail. Um, I would recommend you plan for 30 minutes um, of a consultation. Of course, if you want to make that shorter and do that for 15 minutes, then that's fine. But I would say that recommend 30 minutes. You know your clients better than I do. Some I know do love to have a chat. Um, I'd also recommend that this is the time you take payment for your treatment. Um, this is something I think is really important because prepaying is going to really streamline your customer's time in the spa and it's also going to avoid unnecessary contact with others. Um, and prepaying, obviously, don't forget, is going to avoid cancellations, which right at this moment, you're going to want to uh, avoid those cancellations. And also something that's going to be really important is um, having that unnecessary contact uh, with others will really help you with track and trace you know if that is necessary um, and we hope obviously that that isn't necessary but you will need to know how and who many and uh, who and how many people came into contact with um, the person that um, um, has mentioned that they have symptoms so your time is really precious and, and so many people will want appointments from you um, and you will want to maximise the efficiency of the spa or salon, which is especially important given the added pressure of not being able to run at maximum capacity. So these are all really important reasons why virtual consultations need to, to, to be part of your, your reopening. Um, I do really believe that if you take prepayment, you'll avoid those cancellations, but then you'll also be able to take payment for products that she has run out of. So they're really quick wins. Um, and then you'll also be able to take payment for any products that are recommended in the virtual consultation as well. Um, and these can be bagged and ready for collection after treatment. And of course, if there's something that you're not sure of and you think actually I really do need to see your skin, then say, you know, let's leave that and let's wait until I can see your skin and touch your skin and feel your skin. But most importantly, I think if there's some quick wins there and you can top her up with her skincare um, and there's some really easy quick wins, then, you know, take advantage of that. Um, now, 
Now, something that I've been thinking a lot about is if your team is large enough, um, you may want to consider splitting your team um, for efficiency. Um, you could have a virtual team and then you could have a face-to-face -face team um, and they, of course, would rotate. So you wouldn't just keep them in their, in their teams. They would obviously rotate maybe on a weekly or on a daily basis. And um, I'm not a fan of calling them teams A and B. Who wants to be called Team B? Um, I think it's more professional um, and there's no negative connotations for the team or for your customers. Um, so I really recommend that you think about names like, you know, using virtual team and face-to-face -face team. Um, and it's really important to have a well thought out um, consultation. The virtual consultation could be done back office if you've got a back office, or you could even do them at home. However, a professional setup is really key. Um, and it's super important that you test every element. So you test sending the invite on, and you, and you send that invite to maybe one of your colleagues, or maybe you send it to one of your friends and family. You definitely um, test all aspects, including the Wi-Fi stability um, and also the consultation itself. And this is where your friends and family and colleagues come in into in play because this is where they're really useful and you can do all of those role plays. And, and sharing learnings as well. I think that's going to be really key every day for every aspect of the business. We're going to need to be sharing learnings and best practices. Um, and I see that so much now in the industry, which is even better. We're, we're definitely stronger together. And the power of touch is, is powerful. And we've always known that the power of touch is, is really um, powerful. But don't underestimate the power of your knowledge and how many years you trained and how many product ranges you've learned and all of that knowledge that's been passed on to you. During the virtual consultation, the most important question, and, it, and it's still the most important question, it was always the most important question before doing, um, before lockdown, is actually asking, the most important question is, what is your main priority with your skin by locking that down you both are on the same wavelength you both know what is needed to be achieved so you know exactly what she's thinking you know exactly what she wants from her skincare or from her nail care or from her waxing or whatever it is that we're talking about um, and I think one of the most effective ways in a skin consultation is when you explore the, the client's priority. So whatever she says is her priority, you don't just take that as a given. You really probe and you really delve in, uh, in deeper. And you ask them, what does she see? You need to live, and this is a tricky one because quite often we will always look at the skin and we will always register different things and we'll have scanned the skin very quickly. But what's really important is that you ask her, what does she see? Because um, what you see and what she sees sometimes can be completely different. But also, what does she feel, you know, when she's cleansing her skin, when she's touching her skin, or even just now, you know, how does her skin feel? And also ask her to show you where the area is that she's concerned so that you really can home in and zone in on what she's saying. Um, so they are the most effective consultations when you lock down what is what is the number one priority, but also when you lock down um, how does she feel, how what does she see in her skin. Um, your client will need a virtual mirror so that she can really um, work along with you and really look at her skin closely. Um, and normally, and this is where it's really interesting because it's normally it's you doing the looking, it's you doing the feeling, it's you doing the assessing. However, in the new norm and with the new virtual consultation, you're going to get her to observe how it feels and how does it feel interacts with her skin. Um, now, this, this step is really simple and it is so effective. And it's interesting how going through something like this has really made us realize that when a client feels her skin, when she touches her skin, when she engages with her skin, um, she takes ownership of what she is doing on a ba daily basis to her skin. Um, and that's really important. You're helping her take control of her skin and you're giving her the knowledge and you also, and you probably don't realize it by doing this, but you're also making her become more committed as a skincare consumer um, and what she's using on her skin. So she's told you her priority. 
um, and she's now felt it and she's describing to you what she feels and she's observing in it and it's now real she's now connected to that um, and she's more engaged to solve this issue and I would say that she's more engaged than ever before when she's been lying on your bed and you've been the one that's been doing the skin analysis and you've been doing the the touching and the feeling and you've been lifting the skin or maybe you've been examining the nails whatever you've been doing she's just sat there and she's just listened to you and she's just let you do your job let you do your thing because she relies on you she trusts you but actually right now she's now really committed because she's now feeling it it's all now real um, and this is this is something that's so powerful and really will now come into play now when you're recommending products and when you're actually solving her skin problems. Um, and depending on what priority she says to you, and and depending on you know what are, are where she's seeing those uh, skin issues, um, you're going to teach her. You're going to teach her how to check dehydration levels. Everything that you would do in a um, in a skin analysis, you're going to teach her. So you're going to teach her how to, you know, feel uh, the skin texture, and she's going to describe what she feels. Pay attention to the words that she uses; they're really key. It's really important to mirror what she uh, what she's using and what terminology she's using. But um, you know, dehydration is a really good example, and I think of this as as you know, so many of us are dehydrated. Um, and we lose so much water from the skin a day and teaching her to look at that dehydration and, and being able to assess her skin means that she can she can spot that dehydration really quickly she can spot almost on a on a daily basis oh my skin's really dehydrated you're going to then give her the products to be able to tackle that dehydration you know it could be something simple as and especially if it's superficial dehydration but it could be something as you recommending a hydrating spray and she putting that hydrating spray on we know that the stratum corneum is going to love that it's going to instantly get that hydration into the skin and then depending on the spray will that really help to lock in that hydration as well so i think it's really important that those things those simple things that you know all too well um and you just take for granted when you're doing your skin analysis but remember that you know it's been three months now and if her skin has become really dehydrated we all know that dehydration levels put pressure on the fibroblast cells and cause stress and then the fibroblast cells then are affected because that collagen that we depend on and rely on every day to be produced is going to be affected long term as well so i think it's really important i think it's a really positive step to get her more engaged with her skin and as I previously mentioned, we've got the cautious carols that have done nothing. Um, and then you've got the daredevils um, that have done everything. And but either way, they need your they need your experience, they need your advice, they 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 absolutely need your expertise. And I and I would just say, you know, remember you are the experts, you're the fixers, you're you have the solutions, you you have the answers uh, to all of their skin dilemmas, no matter what. Um, something that I think is really powerful and something that I only really um, came to the forefront of my mind was probably in the last two years. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. And just take a moment to, to think about that. Because when was the last time you were able to be fully present around your client and listen to your client and listen to everything she's telling you. Um, and by that, I mean, go back to when we were in the salon and we were trying to do a consultation and the phone was ringing. Maybe we could hear it in reception and the phone's ringing and you're like, someone picked that up, someone picked that up. Or maybe the door was going and that kind of like just, um, for a moment took you to who's coming into the door you know what i really want you to think about is listen to what she's truly saying 
and also don't prejudge and don't second guess and second guessing is something that we're very good at doing um, and just try not to be distracted um, and that's where virtual consultations really will come into their own because it's going to be you and her and you're literally going to be really engaged and really listening and this is this is the huge opportunity and this is where if you weren't thinking of doing virtual consultations I would really urge you to really reconsider because this is where there is a whole host of opportunities that come now to you um, because you're one-on-one -on -one. there's nobody to distract you you are engaged you're listening you're building that rapport you're building that connection back up again um, and you're understanding you're understanding and you're able to address her her skin conditions and let's be honest lockdown skin is real um, you may have even noticed it on your own skin but you are the expert you can easily fix that but she hasn't been able to and she might have been suffering with sensitivity or breakouts or dryness that seems to be certainly the three camps that it's falling into um, and I really want you to address that open open up and ask how has your skin been during lockdown you know um, you know there's going to be some quick wins um, that as I mentioned you know really easy to correct the skin um, and get that skin behaving quickly um, so there's going to be some really quick wins that you can recommend products to address and I, you know just thinking now off the top of my mind you know off the top of my head um, you know if, if somebody came to me and said oh you know I'm suffering break breakouts there's some really quick wins I would be saying right let's let's look at introducing maybe a salicylic acid cleanser it's oil soluble it can go in and really help to deeply cleanse those pores I might even be thinking of a product that contains niacinamide in so that it helps to slow down that um, oil flow as well um, you know and if I think about sensitivity Sika always comes to mind um, you know we've got Sika um, masks we've got Sika balms and you know or even maybe sleeping masks where we can really nurture the skin and restore that and strengthen that skin's barrier because that's why we've got sensitive skin and then if I think of, of dryness, my instantly I would be like, okay, how often are you exfoliating? What are you exfoliating with? Has it been mechanical? Is it is it a chemical exfoliation that you've been doing? You know, let's try and, you know, increase that exfoliation if needed. But also I would also be thinking, right, let's get some oils into the skin. Let's get lots of lipids into the skin to really lock down that hydration um, and give that comfort to the skin. So I think, you know, there's lots of, quick wins and there's lots of solution savior products that you'll easily be able to come up with very quickly throughout the consultation and throughout that that conversation that you're having and and let's think about this in relation to her coming into the treatment so she might be coming in in a month's time she might be coming in you know in in two weeks whatever time scale she's waiting to come in to see you because you're going to be really busy what we're very aware of is that the longer she leaves this skin, the more problems there are going to become. We know that dehydration, the moment the skin's dehydrated, a whole host of other problems can come um, to the forefront of the skin. Um, and so therefore, we really do need to, um, you know, even think about actually, let's get these solution saviors out in the post. Um, and therefore she can she can start using them. I always recommend though, when you are doing virtual consultations, don't make them all about product. Um, your client never wants to feel like she's being sold to. She really wants to feel that you are giving her lifestyle advice. You're, uh, you know, genuinely wanting to help her um, and solve her, help Scott solve her skin dilemmas. So I think it's really important that she doesn't feel that she's being sold too. Um, the thing that I would say now, uh, this is quite interesting, but I really feel uh, you know quite strongly about this beware of the words that you're using now more than ever um, and you know something I've, I've taught retail sales for many many years um, and you know and this is a, a word that I feel very strongly about is the word luxury and um, it comes from a good place but um, the words that we use sometimes can trigger thoughts in your customers minds and what I mean by that is say for the word luxury or prestigious or uh, decadent um, and as I said they come from a good place because you want to make this cream or you want to make this product sound beautiful um, but you don't know somebody's personal situation you don't know what they've been through um, in lockdown you don't know if money is a concern you know and the moment you use the word luxury or any of those other words that I've mentioned um, we start to see in 
internal voices going on in the customer's mind and she starts to think okay so if it's luxury then is it a necessity and can I justify it and and therefore you're going to get her thinking actually no this is this is not for me and and you know it doesn't have to be a luxury and I'm going to come back to that in more detail if you've tapped in and if you've understood your client's skin priority um, she will also see it's a necessity and she'll also see it's essential um, and really take the time um, to market the the fact that you are back open yes by social media brilliant but also by calling the first weeks um, you're going to be flat out and if hairdressing's anything to go by which is really exciting but don't forget those customers that haven't booked and you know maybe they haven't booked because they're nervous or maybe they didn't realize that you were open or maybe they're caring for others maybe they're not extending their bubble or they're self-isolating and calling these clients will allow you to check in to give them reassurance and you can take that time to explain all the measures that you have taken and implemented for their safety um, and you can also um, give them um, a moment to take and give the opportunity sorry for you to share um, the new treatments that maybe you have um, and they could be treatments for those people that are not able to come in or not are, that are not wishing to come in um, and this is where I think, you know, this is, these are unprecedented times and there is a need to think outside the box and an obvious revenue stream. And for me, follows seamlessly on from a virtual consultation is a virtual treatment. Um, and I'm sure some of you are thinking right now, Fiona, are you absolutely crazy? Why would you teach our clients how to do something themselves when it forms such an important part of our business? And I can assure you, that's not what the client will learn. Um, she will have an enjoyable, relaxing, informative and fun experience. But I can also guarantee what she's going to learn is she's going to learn that it's harder than it looks and she's not going to be able to, to do what you do. It's not going to feel the same. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to have those benefits. Um, and she's going to definitely always want to have you doing it. So I think, you know, don't shy away from virtual treatment. Um, and, you know, I've just been thinking of some things that you could do. Um, you know, they could be glow boosters and these are all virtual. Um, you know, they could be 50 minutes they can be 30 minutes you can you can decide but I think it's important for you to think about you know all of those little treatments those mini treatments that could be just little skin saviors you know we've talked about product skin solutions but what about those little treatment saviors that we all take for granted you know we look at our skin and go oh dear not looking too good and we we go off to the bathroom we shut ourselves off for 15 minutes and we'll exfoliate a mask you know, that's not as easy for our customers. So why don't we do like glow boosters? What, what about double cleansing? You know, these can be tutorials, you know, teach them how to double cleanse, double cleanse correctly. You know, maybe even do detox treatments. Maybe there's some congestion treatments that need to be done. I would also say things like eye treatments, you know, teach your client how to apply eye products, but also teach her how to do a little eye lifting massage, really to be able to focus on lifting, but also to really smooth out the appearance of the uh, lines and wrinkles. Um, Technic, it's sadly uh, real. Um, so, you know, let's design some Technic treatments that, that could be done, makeup tutorials even, you know, and I would also urge you to contact your suppliers, your brand suppliers, and ask them, you know, have they got any gifts with treatments? Have they got any um, travel sizes or any samples that you could use and you could make up little care packages for to support that virtual? Because I do think you do need to charge for these uh, virtual treatments. And I think that's really important. The virtual consultation is part of that, that treatment that they're coming in for. And as I said, you know, split your team so that you're not, you know, you're not struggling there um, in terms of efficiency. But I do think that what's really important is to price these virtual treatments up, you know, and as I said, 15 minutes or 30 minutes, price them attractively, maybe even do redeemable against um, purchase of products. 
um, but I would also get your client to pay in advance. Um, it's something that we have said for um, when they're booking the treatments, when they're doing the virtual consultations, you want them to pay in advance to avoid the cancellations. It's exactly the same or, um, as this. And this is, I think virtual treatments is, is definitely thinking outside the box, but it's also definitely thinking about if you are a team where there is a lot of you and you can't all be in that salon at the same time, yes, you're going to extend your hours and yes, you've already thought about having rotors and, you know, and various things and tag teams, you know, but think about also, you know, what else can the teams do if they're not booked? And that's where, you know, I, I really think virtual treatments are the way forward, um, certainly in, in these unprecedented times. And I think, you know, the competition, the competitive advantage is you. Um, and I think, you know, don't underestimate the power and don't underestimate the connection that you have with your clients. Um, some of them have been with you for years and they trust you. And that personal connection is now a new hurdle because now, you know, wearing PPE is going to be the new norm. Um, so we've always relied on human touch. We've always hugged, our, you know, especially those regulars. We've always, you know, hugged them to welcome them back into our homes. Um, and eye contact has always been really important, but it's now even more important than ever. Um, you know, so use your arms to express yourself, to welcome them. Use Namaste to show appreciation. Um, the one thing that I think is really important in these unprecedented times and what we've all been through is you can't buy trust. And trust is what every brand is striving for. People buy from people. People buy from people they trust and people buy from who they are, who um, people buy from people who are honest with them and have integrity and show empathy and support. And trust is really precious and what every successful business is built on. So don't abuse it and don't, and don't um, abuse it, but also make sure you really treasure it. Now, I love this quote um, to end on, and I think this is something that we really need to keep in the forefront of our mind. We can't always choose the music life plays for us, but we can choose how we dance to it. And I really believe this is, you know, something that we can take to all aspects of our life. Um, but now more than ever, as we, as we, you know, prepare to reopen. And I also believe that this is your time this is the rise of the professionals. We are stronger together. Thank you. Um, and I hope that I've given you, you know, just a few more ideas to consider um, and how retail sales can pay a part in your new journey. You know, don't shy away from it. Um, it's there. And I think that there's some really amazing opportunities of how we can rebuild and reconnect with our, with our customers. And I'm obviously very happy to take any questions that you may have. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Fiona. That was amazing. We've had loads of comments as you've gone along saying this is fantastic advice and really great to hear. So thank you. I really like that positive ending as well. Now's the time. <laughs> the rise of the professional. I really hope so. I think people really have missed their, their professionals. I don't know when they've been trying to recreate treatments at home, it's no way the same. So I'm really hoping that once we're finally allowed to, to reopen, people really, really will have appreciated the, the power and the authority and the experience that, that beauty professionals have. I think so. So fantastic, we've had a few questions through already. If anyone else has any questions for Fiona, then now's your chance to get them answered. Fiona's obviously a fantastic skin expert, retail expert, so a great opportunity. Um, do type them in the Q&A box in Zoom or the chat or the chat box over on Facebook and we'll get through them all as soon as we can. So um, one question we've had when you were talking about um, online consultations. Yeah. So um, one, one question that we had was about um, prepaying. So the, the, the actual wording of the question is, uh, with prepay following online consultation, how can I know how much in total her treatment will be plus the retail? Often I add things in or they may decide to take some other product that either wasn't booked or wasn't available at the time of consultation. So yeah, yeah what are your thoughts around that? I mean, I guess that people want to be flexible, but you want to get some money up front. So what's the, what's the balance? I think, you know, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? If you, I, I think, you know, obviously, 
upselling in the treatment is brilliant. And I, I, I commend anyone that's doing that because that is the way forward, absolutely. And certainly that's something that I was recommending, you know, before before lockdown is these are quick wins. Um, but obviously, like you said, you know, when, when you're doing everything in advance, it becomes more challenging. But I think, you know, take that time. I mean, you know your customers, you know what she likes. Um, you know, talk to her and, and you know, this is an opportunity to also share with those other people that didn't up, you know, didn't upgrade in their facials. You know, you can really now take that time to talk to them and say, actually, do you know, what about um, adding this on? You know, that's the great thing is that they are in desperate need of your services, your advice, your skills. And this is the ideal opportunity to upskill. So I would say include that in your consultation because this is a virtual consultation where you're gathering all of her needs. And actually, you're going to be really able to engage, understand, reconnect, and actually have even more advantages and more opportunities to up upgrade that treatment. Excellent. Yeah, no, really good point. <laughs> so I think that's it. You can take some prepayment, but you can also be flexible. And another comment actually that we've had that relates is um, somebody was commenting over on Facebook, prepayment could mean no more tips. But again, oh. I think it's not necessarily the case, is it? Um, I mean, the, the, the challenge with, um, you know, COVID in general is that obviously everybody's pushing you to card payments. So obviously, uh, you know, I totally, I totally hear that. Um, and I'm sure there are ways that we can be clever around it. And I'm sure that we can think of um, things, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hang up, get too hung up on it. I'm sure that their, your clients have missed you and they will think of a way to repay you. I'm sure. I hope so. I think it's interesting, isn't it? I think we'll just need to wait and see how things evolve. I think, you know, with yeah. services like um, Uber and Deliveroo and people like that, you can you can tip in advance or you can tip at the end online. You know, there's things that, that can be done. But I think um, also I think people, you know, it's things are going to evolve day by day once we get back to work and we'll, we'll kind yeah. of need to play it by ear. So, and I think, you know, this is where the industry, what the, definitely the thing that I have noticed with the industry is that we have all pulled together um, and we are stronger together. And I, and I really, you know, for me, that that's so powerful in so many ways, but sharing is so important. We need to share all of those challenges, you know, and, and every day is going to be a learning day. And I think, you know, the hairdressers are going first, as we know, they're reopening this weekend, you know, let's stay close to them. Let's learn from them. Let's hear what they're, how they're handling, you know, there will be some crossovers. So I think it's important for us to, to really share as well. Yeah, absolutely. And a good way to do that if anyone is interested in doing that, our sister title HJ do uh, daily webinars and, and Instagram lives as well. So do keep up with what they're doing because they're talking to lots of hairdressers about what they're planning and what they're experiencing. So next week will be an interesting time to hear back from them. Yeah. And um, another question we've just had pop up is, have you got any tips for retail in a spa in a hotel? Um, I used to struggle to sell. Um, but I never had that problem in my previous day spa. So I suppose it's different challenges, isn't it, when you're in a uh, Yeah, I mean, the challenge is, um, and if I, if I, if I talk um, pre uh, lockdown because I think uh, you know I I used to hear that all the time and one of the things that I do a lot of is is customer journeys and understanding where the retail area is so that when you are recommending products you know what's the logistics of you getting products and things like that and I think just you know. Um, now we are in this situation there is no retail area so in almost it's it's the consultation becomes even more important than ever before and I, I think my one piece of advice is is lock down what that priority is I know that you know for me my my skin and skincare is is a priority to me it's essential to me and once you've tapped into what is their priority it then becomes something that's really super important to them. And then I think then retailing becomes a lot easier. Um, and I would just say, just take the time to reevaluate what you were asking, you know, um, and when I when I teach retail sales, quite often the questions I ask people is, you know, tell me what do you ask in a consultation? And, and you know, I have people say, oh, I ask, you know, what products they're using. And I'm like, is that really relevant? You know, mm -hmm. because, if it's a priority and it's breakouts, has the product worked? Has she still got breakouts? You know, clearly maybe the product isn't working because she's still got breakouts. So I just think, you know, go back to that consultation. It is really key. Um, and I think that's where a virtual consultation is going to be, is going to be so uh, important going forward. Absolutely. 
Um, somebody has asked, what do you use for your online consultations? Or what would you recommend? Yeah, so I believe that a lot of software companies that, um, like Forest, for example, I believe they have done and they've worked um, on online consultations for you. So if you've got a booking system um, that's already uh, in place, uh, do speak to them because I do believe that they have helped with online consultations. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, online consultations in this current situation, I do really believe that online consultations are only part of the picture. You do really need to do that virtual consultation to get a better understanding because they very often do only have one word answers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think you need the, the full picture, don't you? You need to be able yeah. to see your, your client's skin for sure. And um, a question that we've had pop up is from a hair and beauty salon. Um, and so we do both. Hair is obviously going back tomorrow, but the beauty salon side um, isn't. Um, the beauty salon side is primarily nails. Do you have any suggestions on what we could be doing in the salon environment to be engaging with the client prior to going back? So I suppose once hair is open, but to kind of get uh, interest going for beauty. Yeah, and beauty I mean, open. I think, you know, obviously you you are in a perfect situation because you've got clients coming back in. So, and, you know, it is... It is sad that we don't have a date and obviously it's in incredibly frustrating. But what I would say is if you are hairdressing and nails or hairdressing and beauty, take full advantage of those hairdressers. Um, and, you know, could you, and I know it's going to take a bit of preparation, but could you be doing some virtual uh, classes on how to how to take care of their nails until you can actually get there? You know, could you come up with some little tutorials? Could you could uh, just, I would say, just think outside of the box um, in terms of you have got uh, hairdressers there that could really self-promote you um, mm. and so I think you know just think of those kind of things um, as well. Excellent and um, one other question going back to well still on nails to a to degree Julie over on uh, Facebook's asked I have some clients and um, nail clients who can take ages choosing the shade for their manicures and pedicures any ideas on getting clients to choose before they come <laughs> time will be of the essence with disinfection etc um, but I don't want my client to feel like I'm rushing her so yeah, I suppose how much can you get them to do ahead of time without it feeling well? I mean, I mean, isn't this going to be the problem? And, and you can all think of those customers that literally mm. love to chat and, you know, um, and, you know, like you said, you don't want to rush them, but you, it is going to be in the back of your mind that, you know, you have got this window where, you know, they can leave the premises and, and you know, safely without having, you know, um, a backlog of people uh, coming in and out of the salon so it, it is going to be challenging I would say in the consultation and I don't know if this is even possible um, but um, I've seen them where you can have those nails all painted in the different colors and I know that you would use them in the in the treatment anyway but could you have them with you in the virtual um, consultation and could you try and lock down you know even just a range like for example is it nudes or is it brights or is it reds or is it oranges try and kind of at least try and lock her down so it's not such a wide array of mm. colors i would say yeah i think that's it isn't it it's going to be a, a learning curve when we get back into the salons and can't necessarily have that that chat and that kind of uh, delay yeah. for any of the appointments it's going to be quite rigid but yeah that's great great ideas and um, another question we've had is, do you have any further advice for a home-based therapist? Um, I suppose with, with retail or with any aspects of going back to work. Yeah, I mean, I think um, when you are home-based, you have more challenges if, uh, if I think about it, because I think that, you know, obviously they're going to feel that they have more time to chat. Your customers are going to think, oh, well, she's at home. She's going to have you know, all the time in the world. And that's going to bring its own challenges. So I think that's where your virtual consultation is really important because you can, you know, when she books, you can say now the next step is the virtual consultation. And I think you, you have to take that time to explain, you know, um, I know that on social media, a, um, a home therapist contacted me to say, how does she recommend that she goes about you know reopening and you know we were chatting about things like you know have it can you have a different
different entrance. Um, you know, can you shut the doors where, you know, if she, if you can't have a different entrance for her coming into your home, can you shut the doors so that you're limiting where she's going um, and only have the doors open and get her to go straight there? And also make sure that you do explain to her that, you know, um, you don't want to rush her and therefore this is what the virtual consultation is for to, to discuss everything. Um, and then, you know, when you come in, it's a treatment time. And I also think how lovely to be able to go back to actually giving a beautiful treatment and actually just focusing on delivering the most amazing experience and not having to think about everything else that normally is going on in our minds. Yeah. Fantastic advice, thank you. And um, we've we've been going for quite a long time. I hadn't quite realised how long we've been going, but we've had so many great comments, and um, it's been fantastic. But we probably better wind up. <laughs> but thank you so much, and thanks everyone for watching. We've had some really good and um, positive feedback. So fantastic advice as always, really really good and great to hear you. So thank you, Fiona. You're very welcome. Um, I do just want to say to everyone, I think um, if you're watching over on Facebook, the intro is cut off. We were just talking before we started about the technology and the pressures of it during lockdown, but we had a little glitch with getting uh, the live stream started, so they may have missed the, the first few seconds, but I just wanted it because of that to say um, a huge thank you to everybody who has supported so far our salons are safe campaign and um, we know it's such a hard time for beauty salons and spas at the moment without a confirmed reopening date so our salons are safe campaign is running today on all our social channels we're really urging everyone to get behind it and um, share images and videos of why your salon is safe what you've done to make your salon or spa safe and um, use our hashtag and tag in your local MP tag in Boris <laughs> right to your local MP we've got a template letter as well and um, on our website so anything that can be done to try and get a bit more clarity and a bit of a reopening date so people can start to get back to normal and start to make a decent income so yeah if you've not got involved yet please do but for now thank you so much Fiona Brackenby uh, for all your knowledge and wisdom it was great to have you with us uh, thank you very much it's my pleasure and obviously yeah let's let's really campaign and let's really get behind this you know we are stronger together and um and we need a date so let's keep pushing <laughs> thank you and thanks everybody for joining us and we'll see you next week for more webinars <laughs> bye thank you bye